Hello my lovelies and welcome to my channel and the final installment of Grand Theft Soda Can. Update to my nephew stealing cans from my shed. My eldest nephew went mental on my house. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. To start off with, yes, I did get more cameras. One I installed right above the shed, so it looks like I've got the whole area covered. I want to say that my sister and brother-in-law, as well as my nephews, have learned from this whole ordeal. But that's not entirely the case, especially for my eldest nephew, who just couldn't let go of wanting revenge on me, and he stupidly tried to get it. Here's what happened. To recap, as many previous readers know, my nephew stole a crap load of cans from my shed after breaking into it and cashed them in at the bottle drop for about $200. My sister and brother-in-law acted like I was an a-hole for wanting the money back for the cans and damages. I ended up pressing charges because they refused to pay, and things turned pretty ugly. I filed a small claims lawsuit and they had to pay me back for the cost of damages, theft, emotional damages for constant harassment, and the cost of the lawsuit itself, all adding up to $500, which finally made my sister and brother-in-law raise a white flag and actually start parenting their kids. My nephews got all of their privileges taken away and were forced by a judge to work community service, which they hated and had to be forced just to complete. They didn't get more than 100 hours each because I'd been repaid by their parents when we settled out of court. So the judge pretty much fast-tracked the case. My nephews ended up picking up garbage and doing work around several local parks, and the man directing them I heard was a retired drill sergeant, so they had no fun whatsoever. My eldest nephew constantly showed his issues with authority and got into screaming matches with everyone who told him to work. His father had to be called over just to make the boy pick up a rake. The kid openly blamed me for his predicament, and his brothers were both initially on his side. But after a while, they realised that he's just crazy and entitled, and they no longer want any part of it. So my two younger nephews stopped following his lead, because it finally clicked just how in the wrong they were. Problem is that my sister and brother-in-law blamed me for the divide in their family, which didn't end well for them, as no one in the family was on their side about it. Everything was put on them and their bad parenting, and without me to blame, they just became silent and bitter. Half the family don't want to associate with them, and now their own kids are divided because the eldest refuses to change. It got so bad that my eldest nephew resorted to something so incredibly dumb, you're not going to want to believe it. In the middle of the night, he sneaked out and assaulted my house with a pair of his dad's claw hammers. I say a pair because he literally had one in each hand. The first thing he did was start smashing the new lock on my shed, and it didn't break, but he heavily damaged it to the point it was no longer usable, and I had to later remove it with bolt cutters. He also did a lot of damage to the shed door with the hammer's claws. I awoke to the sounds of the hammers and called the police after peeking through my bedroom window and seeing someone outside hitting the shed. Though I didn't realise it was him at first because he had his face covered with a creepy-looking mask. He saw the bedroom lights come on and chucked one of the hammers through my window. There was broken glass everywhere, and I'm lucky I didn't cut my feet on any of it because I was barefoot. Then my nephew started beating on my back door with the remaining hammer. He did major damage, breaking the knob and the window on the door. He also tore into the door itself with a hammer claw. I was worried the door wouldn't hold out, so I yelled police were on their way, and he took off before they arrived. The night vision on my cameras showed it was him. He had a mask on, but was wearing his school hoodie as well as his Nike shoes that were also pretty identifiable since his brothers don't have a pair like them. His fingerprints were also on the hammer he threw at my window. My nephews had already all been fingerprinted when they were arrested the first time, so police matched the ones on the hammer to him. When the cops came for my eldest nephew, he obviously denied it was him. But there's no one else it could have been. The other hammer was found in his room, along with the clothes and mask he wore, all of which were taken as evidence. 
The mask was of a Star Wars character I was told is called the Grand Inquisitor. This time, though, his parents did nothing to try and protect him, and they didn't try to pass the blame on me either. They just let their son be taken away screaming. I wasn't there to see the arrest, but I was told by my sister that my eldest nephew was switching back and forth from crying that he didn't do anything wrong to screaming that it was all my fault and he had to get back at me. The boy had to go through a serious mental evaluation and was found to be potentially bipolar. Doesn't really excuse what he did, though. Later on, when he was properly diagnosed as bipolar, he started blaming everything he did wrong on that and acted like he should be vilified just for getting treatment for it. But he ended up having a month-long stint in juvenile hall. They got my nephew properly medicated and he pleaded guilty to forego court again in exchange for more community service and mandatory counselling, as well as probation this time. His dad came to my house and personally replaced the broken window and door, though he barely said a word to me while doing it. My two younger nephews are still excluding their older brother from pretty much everything, and he still hasn't apologised for attacking my home either. He's also, unfortunately, repeating a school year because of how badly his grades tanked, which his parents are still very unhappy about. My two younger nephews dropped by on their own in July to personally apologise to me. They said that they always just followed their brother's lead, and he made everything they were doing seem so fun. But the punishments for the crimes are not worth the kind of fun they were having, and they don't want anything to do with it anymore. They want their fun uncle back and asked if we could start over. I said we can, but they'll have to earn back my trust, which they happily agreed to. My eldest nephew had his 17th birthday a few months ago and basically got nothing, not even a cake. It was part of his punishment for what he'd done. I can only imagine how much money he's cost his parents in the past year alone. He led his brothers to steal from me and then destroyed my bedroom window and back door. I imagine in total with the lawsuit I'd previously filed and replacing both the door and window cost them over a thousand dollars. Doors and windows are not cheap. Meanwhile, my youngest nephew had his birthday a month after that and got a new mountain bike amongst his gifts. This really upset my eldest nephew and he slashed the tyres on the bike with a kitchen knife, which landed him in even more trouble. I know a thing or two about fixing bikes, so I went out and bought some new tubes and tyres for the bike and put them on it. So the bike is fine and my nephew thanked me a lot for fixing it. My eldest nephew resorted to trying to run away because he wasn't being enabled anymore. He just walked out, got on his bike with a backpack full of stuff and rode off. His parents quickly reported him missing because he left a goodbye letter that basically blamed me and his bipolar for all his problems. In the letter, he stated that he can't wait till he's 18 to get away from us all. So he was doing us a favour by getting rid of himself sooner. But he came back three days later without his bike or backpack and looking beat up. He wouldn't tell anyone what happened. We still don't know but he was chewed out for continuously using me as a scapegoat for his personal issues, because blaming me was the first thing he did after he got back. I didn't make him steal from me. I didn't make him attack my house. I didn't make him run away. That was all him, and he nearly ended up back in juvie for running off because he violated his probation. But he got off easy somehow. Currently, he spends his days pretty much in his room when not in school, or doing chores or going to counselling. He finished his community service, but his probation will last till he's 18. He got some lenience for being diagnosed as bipolar, but it couldn't get him off the hook. And believe me, he tried many times. Once they told him what was wrong with him, it became his excuse for everything. But plenty of people go through their whole lives with that same mental condition and never do the kinds of things he did. I've been mending things with my two younger nephews, but I don't want to be around the eldest at all. And the feeling is clearly mutual on his part. I've only seen him once in person the past few months, and he glared at me with more hate than I've ever seen from anyone before stomping away. He can't paint me as the villain anymore without being called out on it so there isn't much he can do other than just try to get through this. 
For the most part, he's totally shut down since school started. I'm told he barely speaks, even at school. My other nephews tell me he's getting laughed at and ostracised, which I don't think is going to help him get better. My sister and brother-in-law are also not on the best terms with me right now as well, but they can't exactly put any blame on me either. They know it was all on them and their bad parenting. I've basically forced them to be more active in their kids' lives, which they should have been doing already. They complain a lot of being tired from work and keeping an eye on their kids, so whenever we talk as of late, it's always awkward and forced. They don't come to my house, or me to theirs, but we do see each other at my parents' house, and our mother demands we be civil there, which I have no problem with. My two younger nephews have regained most of their privileges. They got their TV and video games back, but my eldest nephew isn't allowed on them at all. I'm told he's got some electronic entertainment in his room, but what kind, I don't know. I just know he spends most of his time in there unless he has to be somewhere else. My eldest nephew is also not welcome pretty much anywhere in the family anymore. I've recently heard from my parents that they don't even want to see him on Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve this year because they are sick of his behaviour and petty thievery. I guess I can understand that, but even I feel it's a bit harsh. My sister and brother-in-law do as well because they are threatening to boycott if he can't come to either holiday. I can't stand that kid and would not want him in my house either, so I can understand why they've made that decision. But I don't think excluding him from everything and everyone is going to make him better. It's going to take a long time for my eldest nephew to mend bridges, if they can even be mended at all. The way things stand, he may try running off again once he's of age, unless the last time scared him too much to try it again. But hopefully things will get better for him in time, if it's not too late to fix his behaviour. I may not like him, but he's still my nephew, and I care. But I'm kind of powerless to do anything. For now, the most I can do is just keep my nose out of it and offer support where I can. Well, friends, Opie is definitely not an a-hole. He is thinking of the future of his nephew as much as he can. This kid's being excluded from everything, and it may end up being more and more detrimental. At least he's there if he is needed. And I think that's important and I think that needs to be put out there. Anyway, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. And until next time, so long, farewell, pip pip cheerio, much love and bye.